Hi there guys, um, I'm making a video about an endless runner game and it's a fairly simple uh, run, I can show it just as a starters. It's as simple as you just jump from platform to platform and you can double, double jump. I'll show you later the code uh, in order to get the double jump and all that. Um, and yeah, it, there's a current score and a high score. If I die now, it restarts and I have 18 as my high score, but that's it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the game. Very simple, but endless. So, let's go into the, um, the scripts themselves. First off, I have uh, the platforms. Um, I don't know if you noticed, every time I got a certain distance, the platforms moved uh, a certain distance as well. That's this script, and uh, I'm opening the other script as well. Um, first off, we are trying to find the player, or actually this we don't really need because I'm not using it. Uh, but I can show you in a bit um, what I can use it for. Um, then we have a, uh, the distance, which is also for the transform up here. Um, but this is the starting position that the platforms themselves are. And we define that the position that they start in is where they are right now. Uh, and this is of course in the start menu, uh, the start function, which is the first thing that's called. Um, and then we have again the distance, which I'll come back to. And um, we have an if statement here, uh, stating that if our um, platform is uh, no we are actually using the fine player um, it is just to find out where the player is in the 3d space um, it's what this means it's just find something with the name player i could also call it bjorn or tobias as my no own name is but that required my player here to be called tobias but right now I chose to call it player. Um, and in this if statement we are stating that the position of our platform on the x-axis um, should be less than uh, or if it's uh, less than um, the position of the player minus 15 then it should take that uh, platform and move it 60, uh, 60 uh, along the x-axis. And that's the only thing that this script does. It's very, very simple. Then we have the player. First off, we had the points, the current points, and we had a high score. Then we have um, a float, which is, uh, which is the jump uh, effect we, you see. It's simply how much force it should add when jumping. Then we have uh, the movement of the player. Um, we have a boolean saying if we can jump. Because I have the double jump, I have to tell it you cannot jump infinite. Uh, so you can just fly over the map and that's it. Um, and then we have a jump count, which is of course how many times did you jump uh, for now. And then we have the position of the player. Uh, we're using the position of the player to uh, say when you die, go back to that position. And that's also what we're going to uh, use these transforms for. 
that's to find the different um, platforms that are, uh, are here. It's probably not the best method to do this. Uh, an array of some sort would probably have been better, but I found this uh, working, so I stuck to it. Yeah. So, um, in the starting position, uh, the starting function, we tell it that you have zero points, that the high score is zero, you haven't jumped yet, you can jump. Uh, we tell it that the position that the player is in before the game even starts, that's his starting position. If he dies, that's where he goes. And then we are simply finding the different uh, platforms as we did with the uh, player in here. We said uh, that the game object it should find was a, an object called player. We do the exact same thing in here, just with the different flaws, or actually it's platforms, um, but that's pretty much what this does. Um, and then as you, uh, as you can see, we have uh, such that the um, the player keeps moving on the x-axis. He doesn't have any control of it. I just say, you move at this speed, and that's it. Um, and then we have the jumping effect. Uh, I have it so you can use either W or the up key. Um, uh, yeah, and we are here. We are using the can jump boolean, where it's pretty important if uh, that it has to be true uh, uh, because we have to be able to jump. Um, but if all those uh, are uh, the requirements are met, then we simply tell uh, the body of our object that you should add force in the uh, y axis and the jump you see here is um, already predefined up here in this uh, oh all, of, all up here um, yeah so here we use the jump count to make sure that you can only jump two times. Um, if it reaches two times, um, then it should say you cannot jump anymore. And if it doesn't say you cannot jump anymore, that means two or above, then you should just jump. And here I make sure that it actually goes back to so you can jump once more if you hit a platform. Uh, I'm under uh, zero, so here I just say that if the player is below a certain point, which is very very close to the platforms, then you should say the jump count is equal to zero, so we can actually jump again. Uh, and we have the points, which I say that the current point is adding one more each second. It's time to dot delta time is the real time, as in seconds. Um, and here I'm actually just calling uh, a death function, uh, which is defined right underneath. Um, and we, here I say that there is a death floor. Once you reach this death floor, or de yeah, death floor, um, the player should be transported back to his starting position. All of the platforms are being told to go back to the original position. And the get component is to see uh, to get the the variables from another script, uh, and in this case, it's called platform movement, as you can see up here. 
uh, and I have them public, uh, or at least this one is public. So I can actually access it from the player controller. And that's why I say that the uh, current pos position should be equal to the first position uh, of the platform. So it just goes back uh, to the or original position. Um, this small if statement is simply to see if you've beat the high score. If the points you, uh, you've gotten in this round is higher than the uh, high score you didn't have, uh, that you did have before, then you should make um, the uh, high score equal to the new points and reset the points. So you make sure that the points you just got is the new high score and then you reset because we are in the death of the player. So you have to reset the points so you don't just continue on uh, with the points. And here in the end I have the color of uh, the on GUI is um, on the screen, so to speak. Um, this uh, is something that's just sticking on the screen. A label is just text, and as I showed you, uh, it says current points and high score. And here I just take the points from up here and display them and the high score as well. Um, it has to be said that up in the top I say that these uh, the high score and the points is floats because the uh, time that delta time is running in float. So uh, what I'm doing here by writing uh, parentheses with int uh, in front means that I'm converting a float to an integer. And that's it. Uh, yeah, that's actually all of the code I made. Very, very, very simple uh, in order to make our small game here. Oh, let me maximize it. And then it's just have fun and Keep on going till your desire is up. <laughs> Mine usually ends around 20 or so. <laughs> but I've made sure that the map doesn't change at all. Uh, in future work, it could be quite fun to make them randomize. But yeah, not right now. So yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching.